Hoodwink is out and about, so keep an eye on your stuff. With an arsenal filled to the brim with damage output and some next level squirrely evasiveness, this furry critter is going to drive her enemies nuts. Don't scurry away, this is all about Hoodwink! Hoodwink is a ranged agility hero who works well as a high damaging core or support and excels at tricking the enemy through a mix of crowd control, evasion, and mobility. Her first ability and signature spell is Acorn Shot. This can either be targeted on an enemy unit or on the ground. When cast on a unit, this hurls an acorn at your victim, dealing damage based on your attack damage along with a set bonus and slowing them briefly. The acorn will bounce between units, similar to Witch Doctor's Paralyzing Cask, so it's best used when two enemies are close to each other. The bounces also trigger any attack modifiers and on-hit effects normally, so building something like 6 Mjolnirs is perfectly viable and not at all a horrible idea. When cast on the ground, Acorn Shot will first plant a tree at the targeted location, and then send an acorn out to bounce to the nearest enemy as usual. The downside to this being that you get one less acorn bounce overall, but it's not so bad when you consider her second spell, Bushwhack. This allows Hoodwink to throw a net trap to a target area, if the AoE hits an enemy hero, as well as a tree, the foe will be pulled towards the tree, take damage, get stunned, and have their vision reduced to zero for the duration. If there isn't a tree nearby when you cast the spell, it won't do anything. On its own, Bushwhack is a pretty reliable stun that can pin down multiple targets that you can either fight or run away from. It has a very clear synergy with Acorn Shot, allowing you to deal loads of damage onto a pair of enemies while they're stunned. And if there happen to be no trees around, well hey, guess what? That's what Acorn Shot is for too. This pair of skills allows Hoodwink to cover a large area in a teamfight, and it dissuades your enemies from sticking together for fear of being whomped on by nuts. For a little change of pace, Hoodwink's third skill is Scurry. This has both a passive and active component. The passive portion gives Hoodwink evasion percentage while she's near a tree. Simple enough. When activated, she gains bonus movement speed, phased collision, and tree walking for a few seconds. In other words, she basically gets the clip through the environment. While this ability affords Hoodwink some defensive capabilities, namely through dodging physical attacks and running through the trees when necessary, it also allows her to be more proactive with her gameplay, using the thicket of the woods to sneak up on her would-be targets. She also has a talent that allows Scurry to give her camouflage, turning her invisible while standing still near trees, opening up the possibility for calculated ambushes. Once again, this spell meshes well with Acorn Shot, since you can use it to lay down a tree and gain the passive bonus while you're fending off an attacker, and you can take it one step further by activating the spell to juke them. With the ability to confuse and disorient your opponent to this extent, this skill is not just terrifying, it's downright scurry. Hoodwing's ultimate is Sharpshooter. This causes her to charge her crossbow for up to 5 seconds. When activated again, she'll shoot out a bolt, dealing a heavy amount of damage, a slow, and applying a break debuff on the enemy, depending on how long you charged up the spell. Hoodwink will also get knocked back a short distance after firing off. The spell's got a massive range, and it's actually just as long as Sniper's Assassinate. The big difference here is just about everything else. It inflicts a 50% slow that lasts a pretty long time. The break effect can hinder heroes with strong passives, and the damage it deals is unheard of, especially when you pick up the talent that turns it into pure damage. It's mostly used as a way to pick off an enemy, or at the very least, set up for a pickoff. But the little knockback and slow that it provides could be used as a way to secure an escape if things go a little dicey. With a kit that provides her the maximum level of trickiness, Hoodwink has shown that she's a master of hightailing it, and she'll leave all of her enemies bushed. Hoodwink hopped into Dota 2 on December 17th, 2020, in version 7.28, also known as the Mistwoods Update. Visually, Hoodwink is likely based on a northern red squirrel, as characterized by her distinct pointed ears, deep orange fur, and white underbelly. I was told this information by my girlfriend, who really likes squirrels. She wears a hooded olive drab cloak, which is reminiscent of the Robin Hood motif she plays into, as well as matching parachute pants. With that in mind, it begs the question, what bar is Hoodwink? She is a Milky Way, classic. She is a bar of matcha green tea rebel chocolate. She is a Highwood Tea Bar green oiled nubuck on brown base. Due to her clothing, weapon, and skill set, many players out the gate compared her to both Windranger and Sniper, being some kind of furry fusion between the two. 
Prior to her introduction, the rascally rodent was teased in the Dire Tide 2020 trailer, which debuted on October 29th, being featured on the back of the newspaper that Snapfire was reading, showing her silhouette to the world a whole seven weeks before her introduction. Her lore covers her homeland as well as her reason for fighting. She lived in the bounteous forest bordering the Kingdom of Crimwall. However, as the kingdom grew, rival ore and timber barons would compete for the natural resources surrounding the area, and unfortunately, the forest was part of the raising. For the inhabitants of the Timberlands, they could either seek refuge away from their homes, die fighting against Crimwall's black powder and steel, or test fate by retreating to the haunted glens and groves of the misty wood Tomokan. Hoodwink came of age in Tomo Khan, learning to dodge the predators, integrating herself with the local bandits while antagonizing others, and grew into a mischievous personality. When the barons of Crimwall expanded their conquest to Tomo Khan, Hoodwink remembered her people who had suffered at their hands, who now had to live in the scarred remains of their pillaging. When she had confronted those who she had considered monsters as a child, they turned out to simply be people, soldiers, laborers, merchants, and refugees. Though shocked at this revelation, she knew that the soldiers' black powder and weapons were no match for the real dangers of the Tomo Khan. Knowing that she can always go back to the Tomo Khan if needed, Hoodwink now strikes out at those who dare to further pacify the wilds, taking whatever she wants from them and helping guide any fellow woodland creature back to a life of green once again. Hoodwink is voiced by New Zealand actress Brooke Williams, who isn't in anything I've seen before, but she was in 204 episodes of a soap opera which is damn impressive to me. Naturally, Hoodwink also has a New Zealand accent as a result, making her a Kiwi, which also would have been a good what bar answer now that I think about it. At first, she had a weird filter over her voice that made her sound like she was in a particularly echoey room, although this was patched out a day after her release on December 18th, 2020. I reckon a lot of people thought you had this coming, but that lot's just a bunch of bloody whinges. I did this for fun. On the surface, Hoodwing's personality seems pretty one-note. Her main motivation is mischief, and she's kind of a loner, but that's due to her losing her home while young and growing up around bandits most of her life. In this sense, it's easy to compare her to Wind Ranger or Dark Willow, but upon learning more about her backstory, I've come to understand that the hero's tough front is more of a survival tactic than anything. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's bring it back to the basics. A fun recurring theme is Hoodwing's uncle, who gets brought up a few times, mostly in whimsical reminiscing. My uncle used to tell me bedtime stories about you. Those were some great adventures. Real happy to have killed you. Yeah, I got a fair bit of luck myself. My uncle used to say I was right blessed, you know, on account of not dying like all my other kin. Think I'll pass. My uncle went to the doctor once and never came back. She's also got a few hero responses based on the fact that she's a squirrel. For instance, she hates Nova and Sagan because they're cats, and Hoodwink is nothing more than furry prey to them. Keep the saliva in your mouth, Nova, or I'll pin it shut. I see you eyeing me, Sagan. Not bloody likely. Even if the lady hadn't been crazy, I'd have had to kill the cat. Can't have mass murderers running around. Moreover, her relationships with Chen and Beastmaster are fairly tense due to them enslaving animals. Who said you could be on my team, Beastmaster? Go on, get out of here. Look, you knew we weren't going to get along, just on general bloody principle. If I say what I feel, my tongue might turn black and fall off. Okay, first I'm going to murder all of them, Chen, and then I'm definitely going to get back around to you. Now this next portion is going to all melt into one another. First and foremost, Hoodwink has a very strong hatred towards all the Keen Folk heroes. See Keen, shoot Keen. It's simple, really. Nothing personal, Tinker. I'm just prejudiced. More specifically in this line of responses, she hates Sniper and the Techies for their use of black powder, which, if you remember from her lore, is likely a descriptive analog for gunpowder. She similarly berates Tinker's technology for being worse than the powder. Choke on your black powder, scumbags. Eat that, you powder-using puffer. Your stuff's worse than powder. Remind me to show you something after the fight. This leads us to her relationship with Snapfire. Of all the heroes in the game, Hoodwink's only significant connection is with Beatrice, and it's a hostile one at that. She even has a special line that plays in the beginning of the game that triggers for everyone except the gung-ho granny. Anyone seen an ugly little goblin lady riding a big dumb lizard? I don't blame you, Mortimer, but your saddle partner's gotta die. Do you even know what you did to me, Snapfire? To everyone? Ignorance isn't innocence! Don't cry for the likes of her! 
The reason for her scorn can be found in one of the eight monologues she has available, and the responses also explain the origin of her new home, the Tomo Khan. My uncle used to say we'd never have had to leave home if that little goblin lady never showed up selling her magic powder. Krimmel was mostly harmless before they got the black powder, and whether she meant for them to suss out how to make it for themselves or not. Point is, they'd never in a jillion years have done it without getting their mitts on it in the first place. Once they got it though, their appetites grew. All their appetites, and any of us living on the lands they wanted had no choice but to surrender, run, or die to make a stand. So we came to the wood Tomo Khan, the dark wood, where they say bad things await all warm bloods that enter. It wasn't always that way, I guess, but it has been the stretch of my life. I really like this for a couple of reasons. Most interestingly, it gives Snapfire an extra layer of complexity. While she's been introduced as a lovable destructive grandma, we've always known that she's had a chaotic past. With the monologue, we see the direct consequences of her actions. The selling of black powder to the industrialists led to Hoodwink's home burning down, and it forced her to grow up with the sense of hatred which may have not been there before. It adds a really nice layer of despicability that wasn't present in Beatrice's character prior to this. Therefore, Hoodwink's presence managed to add depth to Snapfire, while adding to the world building of Dota 2. With that, we've come to learn a little more about Hoodwink and what makes her tick. Her desire to cause trouble, and lack of trust for most people she comes in contact with, stems from a life of hardship and loss, despite seeming like a light-hearted character at first glance. Pretty rough for a squirrel. And that's all we've got for now. A big thank you goes out to Lifeless Chaos, who helped me get footage for the video. You're the best. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't, follow me on the various socials, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch, you know the deal. Support the channel through Patreon, and greasing up your standing bird feeders with butter is a safe way to keep squirrels from getting in there. See you soon!